with Harry Wild Jones, who's in this picture they're going to show you right now. Um, and we think that the Hormels came into contact with Harry Wild Jones because he was a very active Baptist missionary and came through town often doing um, uh, missionary work in the community, uh, including at the Presbyterian Church where the Hormels were members. So we believe that's where they might have come into contact with Jones. Um, he was a very prolific architect in the Twin Cities area, known for both residential and commercial buildings. Um, he, the Tangletown neighborhood in Minneapolis, he's credited with developing many homes there, as well as the Lakewood Cemetery Chapel and Butler Square. And we do actually have his book. If you are interested in uh, architects, especially Minnesota architects, it's a very interesting story. Um, it has, a lot of his drawings are held in the Minnesota Historical Society. And uh, that's, we actually got some of his drawings from their collection. So, Mr. Jones made quite an impact on the Hormels. He actually designed many houses in the Midwest throughout the country, um, and he also designed the home that the Hormels had in Clear Lake, um, which still stands today. So that's there, that was built in 1914. And he also did drawings commissioned by George Hormel for a proposed addition to the YWCA in the late 1920s. So I don't know if my camera people can zoom in on these, but these are drawings showing a banquet hall or assembly room addition to the residence of the home, to the residential property that George had offered to build for the YWCA, but this never came to fruition until 2009. So we do have these drawings done by, by architect Jones, uh, which were somewhat prophetic in that, that was something similar was built 80 years later. Um, and now is our closed event center, but soon hopefully to reopen. As excited as Jamie is to go upstairs and see the attic. I'm very um, excited. So as we go up the stairs, I'll tell you a little bit about what you are seeing. Um, the woodwork is curly birch. I just like to show that off because it's so pretty uh, reflecting there with the light. And the woodwork here is so unbelievably well preserved and well crafted. We are lucky that the house is been occupied so that things could be taken care of throughout all these years. You might also be seeing the wallpaper, which is a, uh, this, manufactured by Bradbury and Bradbury, designed in the tradition of William Morris. And this color is called Walden Aesthetic Green. Uh, I guess I should give a shout out to Belita Schindler, who was involved in the restoration of the historic home. Uh, because I believe she is the one who did the research to put in period appropriate wallpapers throughout. And uh, this seems like it would be exactly like something the Hormels would have had in their home in the early 1900s. All right, let's go into the master bedroom quick. I, I'm holding off on this attic thing, aren't I? I'm making you guys build anticipation. You know patience is not my strong suit. <laughs> but I just um, was wanted to point out that in the house we do have some of these signs that say please do not open. It's not that we're trying to hide anything, it's just that those are areas of the house that may not be as well organized. Um, but what do those signs make people want to do? Open doors. Open doors. The open doors. So I'm going to just show you. Are you ready? There's creepy claws. <laughs> we and, uh, weren't expecting that behind the door. <laughs> when people um, are touring and our self-guided tours we let them wander freely at their own pace, and we often hear startled uh, sounds because then we know that they've opened doors and, and maybe been startled by creepy claws here, we affectionately call him. Just that there's some areas we haven't organized or don't really want to organize, so if you see those signs, don't be too tempted. Amanda, do you want to pan in on this painting over here? I guess there's so much to show you, I'm not ready to go to the attic yet. But this is a painting done by George Hormel's oldest sister, Lizzie. Uh, it dates to 1891. That's an old painting. It's in its original frame and original condition, and it's beautiful. Uh, we're grateful to have that kind of art in our collection and um, be able to share a little bit of Lizzie's story, too, and her talent with the community. So she painted it the same year that George started the company. That's a good observation, Jamie. She did paint it the same year. Although she was not living in Austin yet, she did eventually move here and um, teach art at the Albert Lee College, it was called at that time. 
and um, started the art and travel club. So I was very active in the art scene in Austin and uh, I would hope that she'd be on display at the Austin Art Work Center. Um, if, if we, we have seven of her paintings, so I know there's more out there, but we have seven. Anybody out there have any? Let us know. We're always looking to add to our collection. All right, let's go to the attic. A moment you've all been waiting. Open sign. Um, I don't know that I've ever had a guest tell us they opened it and went to the attic. We did have a guest ignore the sign and go to the basement one time, but then he proudly came up and told us about it, so that's okay, I guess. <laughs> so this um, is now the reveal of the attic stairway. Yay! I feel like we need like drum roll music. No. <laughs> Notice how narrow? Notice the steps are eight inch depth and eight and a half inches high. Don't know why it was developed that way or created that way. Architecturally speaking, I suppose it just worked. Um, but we can also, do you guys feel that? We can feel the uh, cold air it's rushing chilling. down from the attic. So at the top, we usually have a piece of plywood or styrofoam that goes over that opening to keep that air from um, rushing down and chilling the rest of the house. Um, we use this fun stick to poke that open. If you can see that. You know, modern, modern tools that we use. So, you guys head on up. I believe that Luke is up there. Good luck filming and walking those stairs at the same time. Hi, Luke. So, here we are in the attic with a few remaining Christmas trees. Merry Christmas. I think we should start singing Christmas girls. Well, shall we sing? <laughs> so, um, we have 10 inch wide shiplap flooring, which would be very on trend for today, also. This stage-like area is actually over the front porch. Um, the around the, where there was the oval windows and there were now vents. Just the thickness and the curvature of all that wood and the rafters in here. This very solidly built building with some modern amenities like our AC system here. And we have some remnants of our historic wiring, which was all replaced a couple years ago. We do have more, more of the, we kept a few of the wires just to, just to know what we had and preserve some of our fun objects. Is this croquet on the table? It is. So yeah, just up here is storage that first off would fit up the stairs and projects that either need to be worked on or need to be figured out what what their next step is. Well, Holly will take you on the other side. It is a fairly large attic. All right. So over here you'll see, um, we found, I don't even think I came up here till a few years after I had started in this job. And because there was really no reason to, but we did discover that this corner pine corner bench is here. The tops do lift up for storage. We don't know um, if it belonged to the Hormels. We don't know where it would have gone. We don't know much about it, but it is something that's on our minds that one day we might preserve and, and showcase because it's a very old piece of furniture. Over here, there is a cedar closet built in. Um, it has two rods for hanging clothing. Um, you know, I guess it would have been customary to store some of your finer clothing in a cedar um, closet to preserve it. And so um, obviously the Hormels felt that was a, something they needed to have for whatever garments they wanted to preserve. Um, there's no light in it, obviously, but it's a cedar closet. Over here is a stack of the original brick. Um, so the house, when the Cook family built it, um, it was of brick, but 30 years later when the Hormels purchased it, they weren't able to match that brick any longer, so um, they stuccoed the exterior. Um, but we do have an assortment of bricks there, and you can see the cameras want to go into some of the crevices. You can see the exterior. Um, it's in great, great shape. 
So yeah, if you, we'll just look in here if we stand out of the light so you can see in and see how thick the walls are. You can see the brick in there if I get, get my shadow out. And for those just tuning in, we're touring the Hormel Historic Home Attic at the moment, which most of you um, have probably never seen. And you might just, you know. Just imagine, it's a very thick wall made of brick. <laughs> when it's I about, stick my phone in there, I lose the wireless. <laughs> it's probably four feet thick. So there is a theory we've heard from a few different people that when this was the YWCA, uh, when after the Hormels left town, they donated the house to the YWCA, and there's a theory that they use this space for meetings, um, Girl Scouts potentially. I have a hard time imagining that they would have brought groups of people up here for meetings, but if any of you viewing know those stories or have evidence that they did use the space for meetings, then uh, please get in touch. I'd love to actually, I just like to verify things before I actually say they're facts. So. Call me strange, but uh, that is the legend. There's a few legends about this property um, that I'm always looking for the actuals. So, including this legend over here. Oh, what legend is that? <laughs> it looks like we might have a ghost. Oh dear! Oh, I lost one. I don't think we're haunted, Amanda. Do you really think we're no. haunted? No. I just thought it was fun that there happened to be one just sitting right over there. All right, we're gonna go back downstairs now. So, um, viewers. Be uh, patient with our camera people as they try to go down those stairs while also viewing or filming. Oh, you can all laugh if I fall. This might. And now I have to go down there without falling. Yeah, I and mean, we're going to watch Jamie go down the stairs. <laughs> that it comes through on the video of how steep these stairs are. <laughs> so I'm sorry if the video starts shaking. Uh, Amanda is not a fan of heights. <laughs> to staff down in the kitchen most likely is where we think the receiving end would have gone and I'm gonna see if I can hold my phone and show you kind of how it works so anyway there's a little bit more information there if you want to if you're a quick reader or even when we are able to reopen safely come on in and take your own tour or retake a tour if it's been a little while. Now we're going to head over to the other side because we've got a little bit more to show you guys yet while we're at it. This stained glass window is actually on our scavenger hunt for our kiddos, uh, but sometimes that tends to be a challenge uh, for people to notice. So now we're going into Jay's bedroom. Yeah, Jay Hormel spent from the age of 9 to 32 in this bedroom. He lived here a long, long time, so it grew from a young man into an adult here. So lots of history preserved here in this room. And actually, Jamie from the Historical Society helped us redo the story panels in here. So again, when we reopen, come read them if you haven't. I'm going to point out the, um, so in the attic we showed you the um, air conditioning system. It's actually something I wasn't familiar with. Well, not that I'm an HVAC expert, but these are called high velocity, high velocity air conditioning system. I can't remember the name, but the ducts, mini ducts. These are mini ducts. So it was a way for old homes, it's still used today. It's a way for old homes to add air conditioning to their um, property without disturbing you know, uh, woodwork or plaster or doing major construction in their home. So I'm not sure the year that our air conditioning was put in up here, but it's a pretty, pretty effective tool for up here. Another um, feature people always ask about is our sleeping porch. And there's a theory that this was added um, in response to the... Sorry, I um, lost my Wi-Fi for a second. 
Oh no. So this was uh, allegedly added in response to the Lindbergh kidnapping. Um, however, we know that that is not true because by the time the uh, that happened, Jay Hormel was the Hormels weren't even living in this house any longer. So this was added in the early 1900s. We believe purely for the health benefits of sleeping with fresh air blowing and the um, uh, treatment or prevention of tuberculosis. Interesting considering the age that we're in right now, huh? In case anyone missed just a chunk of that when I jumped out of the room quick because I lost my internet connection, um, Holly was saying that the a lot of times people get it confused that it might have been because of the Lindbergh baby kidnapping when really we think it was just for health benefits. Yeah. So. That's my tiny little summarization of what Holly said. Yeah. Hopefully you guys heard her version because she's better at that stuff than I am usually. All right, we're going to walk just one more little place before we're done here. I don't know how much time we've spent, but walking now through the bathroom into the servant's ring. And I'm going to just highlight the shower. This is another area where we often hear startled voices because with the curtain closed, people always want to look in the shower. So they'll do this. And another surprise. And then um, we know that you've been peeking. <laughs> yeah. Um, this shower is very interesting. It, it is marble. Um, it was installed prior to 1913. We have the insurance document from that year, which has told us a great deal about the house. Um, but this would have had a nickel-plated mixer, so for hot and cold water, and body sprays. So it was pretty luxurious. Fancy. Um, a pretty luxurious amenity, especially being in the servant side of things. So... That, oh, I always say that I think the Hormos treated their staff like family versus servants. And so, obviously, they gave them a shower with body jets. That's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, we'll walk this way. And we'll take an extra little peek in here. And I see Joanne's watching. So I'm shouting out to her sister who sewed um, and volunteered to sew new shorts for our intern here. <laughs> he gets a lot of compliments on his shorts. <laughs> All right, well, we're reaching the end of our upstairs attic slash second story tour. Um, this is the servant's hallway, if you will. This is um, another set of stairs that goes down to the kitchen. We don't allow people on them now because they're narrow and they're in good shape, but we just don't want anybody to risk falling and such. So it's usually, usually closed off, but now you get to take a look at it. Uh, I would like to thank you for joining us. i let you know that next week on the Wednesday, May 6th, we will be touring the projection room at the Historic Paramount Theater. So please join us at noon if you would. Um, again, the Histor Moore County Historical Society and the Hormel Home are bringing this to you so that we can keep our history visible and available to people. Um, this is a tough time for all. We do uh, still need your support. So when we reopen, please come visit us. Um, if you're so inclined, we both our organizations rely on your generosity. So um, you can find out more about us on Facebook, on um, our websites, um, and in the community. So again, thanks for thanks for viewing. Were there any questions along the way, filmers? We have a couple shout outs. The Kleins from West Virginia say hi, Holly. Hello. And then Judy said, looking good. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Judy. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for all your engagement. We really do appreciate your support and hope you enjoyed the tour. Join us next week at the Historic Fairmount Theater.